Good morning. It's Sunday, December the 20th, and if you're looking at your watch and it's sometime between 10 a.m. and about 12 noon, you're going to want to hit the pause button, jump in the car, and go down to church. It's a drive through day. There's a way to make your contribution for the holiday food baskets. There's kits for activities for the kids. There's hospitality. There's a live nativity scene, music on the FM, and maybe most important of all, you can pick up your candle your candle or your glow stick for Silent Night on Christmas Eve. Hope you go. Well, can you see what's in front of me here? A nativity scene, a crash. A lot of families have them. This one is from Marilyn and Bill Hecht. We're glad they made that contribution. You know, we had one at my house growing up. My mom, I don't know if she got it from her mom, but my brother and I, we would always, you know, we'd like to stick those little green army men in there and G.I. Joe and pew, pew, we were pretty sure we were going to be able to take Herod and all the bad guys on. But maybe you have a favorite character here among these. Um, the answer, of course, is you're, you're supposed to have a favorite, and it's Jesus. That's the answer for all the Sunday school questions. But, but there are others, others here. Maybe, maybe you've thought about the shepherds who were there watching their flocks by night, just out there trying to earn a living, the lowest on the social scale, overwhelmed by this amazing news. Or, or maybe, um, maybe you're thinking about the innkeeper. That poor guy, no room in the inn, you remember. What was he supposed to do? After all, the whole town was full. There, uh, every room in the city was full. At least he provided a manger out and around the back. Well, and then these, these, well, interesting and exotic people, these magi, these wise kings, these persons from the east, what was their thing? These scientists, astrologers, or, or, of course, Joseph. Joseph the dreamer. Was it a construction company that he had? And what did he do about the rumors? You know, the woman to whom he was betrothed was with child. How did that happen? Well, I'm thinking about Mary. Mary, probably 15 years old betrothed, such a polite word, to a much older man, an arrangement that was probably not of her own choosing. But we remember her, I remember her, because of the song that she sang. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. The song goes on. and It's a challenging little tune, but one that would make us stand up a little straighter. Should we worship together, remembering, singing, recalling? My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. The fourth Sunday of Advent, we light all four candles today. The waiting is coming to a close. Faith, joy, we hear the wonderful words of Mary's Magnificat. For whom does the Lord come? For those who fear and respect God, for those who hunger. The waiting is almost over. Listen for the coming. Light one candle to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He shall bring salvation to Israel. God fulfills the promise. Light two candles to watch. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. 
You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. reading from Luke's Gospel. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and we will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child will be born, will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, also has conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who has said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Good morning. It is the fourth Sunday of Advent today, and we use colors to tell time in the church. The season that we're in right now, Advent, we use the color blue. And with that in mind, I wanted to read this book, All the Colors of Christmas by Matthew Paul Turner, published by Convergent Books. And you'll see that there's so many other colors that also fit into this time of year. Christmas is red. It's a shiny new sled. It's candy canes and toy store lanes. It's sprinkles on sweet bread. It's packages with bows and Rudolph's bright red nose. It's pictures drawn and dressed up lawns. It's warm mittens when it snows. It's the drummer boy's drum, his pum 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 pum. It's Santa Claus and cranberry sauce. It's apples, pears, and plums. It's presents that we send to family and to friends. It's jolly cards and merry hearts. Yes, Christmas is red. Christmas is blue. It's a wintry sky's hue. It's flannel sheets and shaped cookie treats. It's a lake frozen through. It's big puffy coats and huge parade floats. It's juniper trees and blue spruce wreaths. It's writing Santa notes. It's a sweater mama knit, stretched yet still fits. It's turquoise lights in the darkest of nights. It's a snowman's outfit. It's memories old and new of loved ones gone too soon. It's an Elvis song and nights growing long. Yes, Christmas is blue. Christmas is white. It's warm candlelight. 
It's mountain tops and small fancy shops. It's turtle doves in flight. It's December snowstorms and blankets so warm. It's angel wings and the song that we sing about our dream for Christmas morn. It's sleigh rides through the snow and tea lights that glow. It's North Pole tales and frosty exhales. It's cocoa with marshmallows. It's a star shining bright on the holiest of nights. It's powdered cakes and paper snowflakes. Yes, Christmas is white. Christmas is brown. It's pine cones scattered around. It's caramel corn and copper French horns. It's winter's frozen ground. It's firewood piled high and reindeer that fly. It's cinnamon sweets and gingerbread treats. It's homemade pecan pie. It's a cradle soft with hay and a donkey's gentle bray. It's God within a baby's skin on that very first Christmas day. It's shepherds kneeling down, the wise ones gathered round. It's Mary's sigh and Jesus' cry. Yes, Christmas is brown. Christmas is you. It's your own unique you. It's your wondrous gleam and your bedtime dreams. You color each Christmas anew. It's your tinsel and flair and the gifts that you share. It's your jingling smile and your fa-la-la style. It's how you love and you care. It's the songs that you sing and the light that you bring. It's your heartfelt compassion and your hope put in action. It's your thrill for the little things. It's your love for what's true. It's the good that you do. You're a part of the story, the joy and the glory. Yes, Christmas is you.
Okay, gang, what do all these people have in common? Aretha Franklin, Billie Holiday, Tina Turner, Alicia Keys. Have you figured it out yet? What do they all have in common? Bessie Smith, Ella Fitzgerald, Tracy Chapman, Mahalia Jackson, and Mary of Nazareth. You got it? They're all sisters of song. <laughs> Notable, memorable, prized, revered because of their music. And they're all people of color. All of them faced bias, all of them faced institution and a world often organized against them. And all of them sang. All of them sang songs about love and about joy. But they sang about things that stirred us up. Things that were about the truth. They sang with honesty about injustice and pain and about loss. You know, among all four of the Gospels, it's really Luke who tells us the most about Mary. And even that's precious little. Oh, we know a little bit about her arranged betrothal, such a polite way to say it. We know a little bit about her extended family and her cousin, Elizabeth. We know something about her clan, her tribe, her ethnic origin, and her citizenship. But what Luke seems most emphatic about, what he wants us to know most about, is her openness to God, her, her longing and expectation that God would come, that God would come and set things right, that there would be deliverance, that there would be redemption of her people. We see, we, we hear her music. We have to wonder if that was a tradition within her family growing up. It sure was in mine. In fact, for my siblings and I, there was an expectation that we would sing all the hymns in all the church services, that we would take piano lessons, and when it was Christmas time, we would do all the carols with all the cousins. All except for my dad, of course. Um, he loves to tell the story of how when he was in middle school, he tried out for choir, and the director said, now, Bob, we'll put you in the front row, and you just rest your voice. You just mouth the words. It'll be fine, they told him. i betting that Mary grew up in a household that understood, that remembered, that recalled the, the tradition of singing, that well, that, that she knew all the songs. She, she remembered Hannah's song, the song about rejoicing at the birth of Samuel, this, this defender, this leader, this prophet. I, I got to believe that Mary grew up in a household where they knew the song of Deborah, Deborah the judge, the one who sang at her people's victory over their enemies. I think Mary grew up hearing the song from Miriam, the one who stood and sang and danced on the beach there next to the Red Sea after they had escaped their slaveholders in Egypt and were now trapped with their horses and chariots in the mud and in the returning water. Mary lived in troubled times. There were, there were troubles. In fact, the wrong people were in charge. There were troubles. It was oppression of one class over and against another. There was the subjugation of women, a failing economy, and social unrest, and a, and a feckless, narcissistic, self-aggrandizing, fratricidal maniac on the throne. Troubled times. Times of waiting and hoping. Times of longing and praying for the better days that were coming. People were sick. People were anxious. People were exhausted and frustrated. And people were dying. And some were so angry, they're ready to take up arms. But in all this, Mary. <laughs> Mary seems able to manage a song. It's a song with verses that must have, well, she must have heard from her own mother. Mary's there with a song, with cadences from generations past. Mary's there with notes that would have been familiar to anyone who had read the great book. <laughs> Mary sang lines that echoed from deep places. Mothers, grandmothers, and, and great-grandmothers, those generations who had gone before. <sighs> Songs that called them out. <laughs> 
Songs that called out the rich, that called out the, the proud in their conceit, that called out the mighty from their thrones, all the time exalting the poor and the lonely and the empty. Would Mary go on to teach all these songs to her baby boy? In those troubled times and in our troubled times, then and now, sometimes all you have is a song. Sometimes in depression and in loneliness and weariness, all we have is a tune. Or maybe it sometimes, you know, sounds like the blues. Or, or sounds like angry rock and roll. Or maybe it sounds like country western tears. Or folk. Or the stirring timbre of bagpipes in battle. Mary's song. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Do you remember how it goes? Sing it with me. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly ones, and from this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. Amen. Let us pray. God of power and might, come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faiths. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love. Awaken us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for leaders and policymakers that they amplify the voices of people in need. Awaken us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Move us to feed those who lack adequate food and nutrition. 
Bless the work of advocates and frontline workers of all kinds. Awaken us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence, especially those mourning loss, such as Pam and Tammy, on the sudden death of Nick, those struggling with injury, addiction, disease, and brokenness. Shannon, Michelle, Tadash, Jasmine, Lindsay, Tracy, Heidi, Patty, Pat, Bev, Bill, Margaret, Mike, Joyce, Greg, James, Wayne, Nazir, Roberta, Brian, Brandon, Nancy, Joanna, and our youngest ones, Holly, Hannah Mae, Jace, Carter, and those we name before you. Awaken us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for worship leaders and church musicians, and especially the bold leadership of female leaders. Inspire others with their steadfast witness. Awaken us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May the, May the peace, peace of the Lord, Lord be, be always, always with you. you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. It's time for some announcements. Hey, listen, if you're listening right now and it's 10 to noon, stop this and come on down to the church. It's drive through live nativity. Baby Jesus is here. The goats have not yet eaten all the hay. There's hospitality, a chance to donate to Santa's food drive with a gift of food or donation, and you can get your candles. You're gonna want, oh yes, or a glow stick if you're a kid or a kid at heart. These are for Christmas Eve on December 24th. There's a service posted online for children and young families. You're gonna want that for Silent Night. And then later, the more traditional Christmas Eve candlelight service. So come down on December 20th and pick those up. Then Christmas Day, please tune in and play Christmas's Past with music from our Savior's musicians and Cricket and Snail. On the 27th, we will hear lessons and carols with Reverend Ed Kuhn reading, and again, our wonderful Our Savior's Lutheran Church musicians. And you have one more chance, one more chance for Holy Communion before all that begins. On December 23rd, Reverend Rick Rouse will give us a reflection on justice, the fourth candle, and I will preside over communion. That's at 7 p.m. this coming Wednesday. And then thank you. Thank you for your contributions here at Year's End that allow us to meet budget, that allow us to continue the ministries, the many ministries of this church. You have been generous, and God is good. Thank you.
And now the benediction. <laughs> the creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. And the unexpected Spirit, guide your journey now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.